The, com the competitive advantage and the absolute advantage. That is absolute, not competitive. <laughs> no, I think it is a comparative advantage. Yeah. Mm? It was comparative advantage, absolute advantage is like that you have seen. Mm, but you have also you have also seen the competitive advantage, isn't it? Yes, yes, of course. I use that terminology. Though I wa if uh, there is a competitive advantage, it means one is a, on the on the market or the international labor or, or market. Every country is competing. Want to produce more. Good quality. Yes, of the good quality. But when it becomes it to the comparative and the absolute advantage, it is uh, different. Yeah. Mm. So the comparative advantage uh, theory for this guy, Ricardo, for him he was uh, emphasizing on the production of the goods that you feel you are comfortable with. You can get the few the resources, the materials of production, the low materials at a low cost, and produce the high quality good. Um, and the one is they produce less efficiently. The one is you cannot produce well. You get them from outside. I was giving you an example I remember of the country of ours, this Rwanda, asking you a question. According to this comparative education, what do you think we should specialize it we should be specialized in in the region or in Africa? Some of you have given me the answer we can specialize in milk production. Um, and we get, maybe we, we, we buy rice from outside because they thought maybe we cannot cultivate the good rice, so we cannot produce the qualitable rice in, uh, in the country, uh, but we can produce qualitable milk or the quality milk at a low cost, but at a good quality. So with the comparative advantage in the country, when you want to decide which one I will go with, you have to go with uh, how you get the low materials and the quality you produce. Will it compete internationally, or it will be the one that will compete locally? Um, then you choose which ones I have to buy from abroad. Which ones I have to buy from abroad. For example, which type of commodity in Rwanda do we buy from abroad? Um, at a high quantity. Can you tell me? For example, clothes. In Rwanda, we are producing less clothes and we cannot easily get the raw materials. Even though we can try to specialize in uh, buying clothes outside, no, but uh, uh, making clothes from here, it will be difficult. And it is still difficult. You know when we started made in Rwanda and how many years we have spent up to today without producing the quality uh, tissues, the quality uh, clothes, and the one we are making the other one is from uh, two guys, I think, the motion and what, 
and this motion is is still expensive and the law materials are coming from abroad even in the um, uh, the materials we are using to produce those uh, shirts then i was also telling you to differentiate this from absolute advantage absolute uh, advantage differ from this comparative advantage <coughs> in this way adam smith for him he thought that uh, <coughs> Countries are different in their ability to produce good efficiently and should specialize in the production of goods they can produce the most efficiently. Uh, if Britain were to specialize in textile production, I gave this example I know in wine production, Smith argued that both Britain and Spain could consume more textile and wine than wine. if each only that produced for their own consumption thus trade is positive some game so for him uh, he the theory the absolute advantage the reason why i told you that you have to differentiate this is because there is some similarity between this and uh, the comparative advantage theory it means like it, it means that if rwanda is to produce maybe milk it should be rwanda should be sure that the milk the export of milk maybe to uganda or to kenya it will be equivalent to the import of maybe clothes from that country that means there will be a zero positive sum game they will be again over again like equilibrium in economics um <coughs> then for today we will go to fdi the fdi itself means um somebody is talking in between the instrument of trade policies i explained it this the tariffs the subsidy the import quotas voluntary export restaurant local content requirements anti-dumping policies uh if you are doing entrepreneurship i and i know that you know this dumping uh these are the policies that are put there so that one external uh one external or foreign company cannot come and sell the goods without the licenses so those anti-dumping policies put there the tariffs and uh, uh, and uh, the licenses that should be applied for before you come and sell something in the country or you go somewhere and sell something your product in the country the subsidies uh, they are also different sometimes uh, you can hear even in rwanda it happens you have heard about the subsidies of taxes on uh, on this oil petrol diesel and uh, gas oil for the fuels for vehicles um this be this was because uh it depends on the reason but the main reason is that the government wants more good in the country but it has no way uh, to get those goods without lowering the costs of production or lowering the taxes so the subsidies they are revenues that uh, the government say no we will not get this we were supposed to get this amount of money from taxes but because we want this good to get in the country we want to lower this to put it at a low rate um i think these ones i explained the when we were in the face to face classes um dumping i explained this is defined as a selling of, of goods 
in a fallen market at below cost of production or at below fair market value but when we put their policies uh, we want you to make we want to make sure for example if we are selling uh, the sweet potatoes from Uganda you bring them in Nyamirambo you are selling them at the low at a lower price uh, compared to those ones from Kinigi so for us we will put there the policies uh, for you that will limit you to sell at the lowest play play price because we know that the production cost of ours was high and they want our citizen to benefit from the market so if you dump you bring the good at uh, the lowest price this means that our citizens are going to lose and they will not be able to produce again the sweet potatoes you know or the irish potatoes maybe um that is an example <coughs> uh there are even the administrative policies you have had in uh, covid or oh, when the I give an example of Rwanda because it's where we are located. For this international trade, it's guided most of the time. We we have even the administrative policies that are hidden. Uh, for example, when you go to uh, when it becomes to conflicts between the countries, some countries will impose the administrative policies which are informal or formal. They will restrict some imports of some goods. When you were in a class, you remember I, I asked you, who can uh, show me where you can buy the Movit, uh, the Movit gel, the, the Movit gel. And some of you told me that you cannot find it in Kigali, and the reason was because it, there was an administrative policy that says you have not to bring the goods from Uganda because the relation the relation the international relation is not working so those are that is an example of uh, administrative policies um most of the time they are bureaucratic they are bureaucratic they come from the offices of administration they say in this village you are not allowed to bring the kanyanga because we you are not producing the kanyanga but the other uh, the other neighbors are producing at the lowest cost uh, maybe because we are still developing the way you have uh, producing the the nguvu gene we are limiting the nguvu gene from like outside um, <coughs> um again there are some political argument for government intervention in international trade. You should know this. There are some political argument. These are the ideas. What are people thinking about the politics, the government intervention in international trade? Some people think that, say that it protects the jobs. When the government... when the government want you to to work well when the government wants a citizen, a citizen to protect uh, to get jobs there will be some roles um protecting the citizens so example go to international trade uh, policies of some countries in Tanzania you are not allowed to do something that a foreigner you are not allowed to get a job as a foreigner that uh, a citizen of Tanzania is able to do that is written within their rules whether it's in a private business or it's in a government business in Qatar it's the same um, in Rwanda I don't know but there are some jobs you cannot do if you are not a, if you are a foreigner. I have never seen a mayor or an executive secretary, um, maybe a, a governor of a bank, a government bank, even a, a private bank. There should be some people from within the country. 
so it protects some jobs for some people within the country and um, even the industries are protected it also retaliates to the unfair foreign competition so if uh, a government a foreign government is uh, uh, competing unfairly we can compete we can uh, retaliate with it or to it by imposing some administrative policies you have got so many examples producing consumers from dangerous products you know this for example in rwanda in the business of uh, uh, pharmacy drugs you know fdi is doing its job sometimes they give the announcement this type of drug is not allowed at the market price because you have assessed and found that it will bring some consequences or some negative effects on the health of human beings um protecting the human rights of individuals in exporting countries yeah when the some laws you can go there within another country with your goods but if the the laws are not respected you can get maybe prisoned your goods may be taken for free uh so many wrongdoings may appear there are also economic argument for international for intervention if the government intervene intervene within the the international trade economically uh, there are some arguments they are down the infant industry argument the strategic policy argument by the in the infant industry argument is considered as a legitimate reason for protectionism economically the government want to protect some goods uh, some activities especially in developing countries context uh, for example in Rwanda we removed ourselves from uh, we accepted it to be removed from Agoa uh, you know Agoa within the United States you remember Trump is the one who announced this that Rwanda is removed from the Agoa but because we wanted to protect our made in Rwanda policy we say that there is no problem of getting away from uh from that ago that is um a, an infant industry argument then the strategic uh, trade policy where the existence of substantial scale economies suggest that the world market will profitably support only few uh firms and may justify government intervention industry industries with the possibly large economics of a scale um <coughs> for this strategic policy they uh, the the argument uh, those who are who support this argument say that uh, the government will only benefit or the trade will benefit some some few farms or companies within the within the area uh so it is different from the infant industry uh what is see the, the the infant industry argument sorry sorry a little bit mm. Yes. Then the development of the world trading system institutions and agreement this I I introduced this in a face to face class. Uh <coughs> there have been so many developments to support the international trade. Up to now there is a, an agency of UN working on international trade which is a WTO uh World Trade Organization. The result of uh, El Gwe round 1986-1994, from uh, uh, 1st January 1995, the umbrella for the three components, uh, and the three components, they are the ones that we think now they are guiding the international trade. 
the GATT, General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. Uh, you can see that when some countries are putting their laws that are against the GATT, sometimes it's, uh, it's brought to court. GATS, General Agreement on Trade in Services, uh, trips, trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. You have even seen so many uh, ISCO, International Standard Organization. This gives the licenses to many countries that want to join the trade. Uh, up to now, we are only still having 25 people in the class. What is wrong with your classmate, uh, Gasana? Did you tell them or you have not told them? I have uh, told them I have written to many messages. On last them. time, last time when I told you that the class will be on Monday. Yeah, yeah. I talked to them. So what is the problem? Do they know that Mount Kenya is following up all the attendances? They are monitoring even if I thought or not thought. They will tell me why didn't you go to class. So imagine if you come to the examination room and you don't find your, re your name on the list. I will not be there. Yeah, I, I don't know what will happen. But they told me that he will not be allowed unless you have uh, attended 95, 85%. So you tell them to come consequently. Maybe they will come again to register for the same course while they had the chance to succeed. Mm. I can only see few, few, few people here. And you are supposed to be over a hundred, if I remember well. How far are you with the assignment? Is it difficult, difficult somehow? So, uh, what do you think will be easy? Do you think the exam will be easier than that? No, 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 no. It is not difficult. I have a problem. Which problem? Or oh, you have a question? Do you know to differentiate a problem and a question? Sorry, a question mm -hmm. <laughs> about uh, the difference between international business and international trade. Mm -hmm. International trade is like a profession or a branch of a trade that is study mm -hmm. the international business. And it's a uh, governance or laws so while the international trade is part of uh, the international business is a part of uh, international uh, trade so one is inside the other and the international trade is the exchange of goods between one no international business is an exchange between uh, of goods between one country mm -hmm. and another mm -hmm. while the international trade studies that exchange are we together thanks yeah so one is a study another is an activity of exchanging mm -hmm. goods it's a business of exchanging goods between two uh, different countries <laughs> and it is done in private trade so let's continue. I was checking on uh, of how many people are present, but okay, I can you, see that uh, I can see that you are still few. Uh, uh, let's talk about the GAT. Uh, you should keep in mind those are abbreviations. General agreements on tariffs and trades, and the general agreements on trade in services. Because these ones, I think you meet with them in many courses within entrepreneurship. And the trade related aspect of intellectual property rights. 
So uh, the WTO was founded in 1947 and the, and the IITO International Trade Organization in 1948. It changed it to, you always see this, though it's, uh, it's the smallest uh, UN agents, I think, and the ILO, International Labor Organization. Uh, the GIT also in 1947 uh, have signed all the countries have signed the provisional agreement on tariff reduction uh, and some parts of IATU the broader aspect of UNCTID uh, it was not included some members of uh, some country members uh, were not included at the time of 1947, the 23 member countries uh, were only there. Um, you will read this, many details are within your notes. Then the GAT and the trade liberalization and the economic trade liberalization. After signing this GAT or general agreement on trade, the economy, the trade, has started to be liberalized. You remember before these agreements uh, and before the First World War, what was there was um, was the international trade between the countries or the continents were mostly based on human, and it was like now if we consider that it was like human trafficking. Uh, the Europeans were trading, even the Arabs were trading the human beings as uh, the human resource to go to work for within their farms, the world. But as it grew, the laws came, and with the, the, the liberalization come, came with uh, some guidelines of trading the goods, not the people. But I recently heard now that uh, people are being traded again. That is called trafficking. So after the Second World War, uh, the U.S. and other nations realized the value of free trade, established a general agreement on tariffs and trade, the approach of GIT, a multilateral agreement to liberalize trade was to gradually eliminate barriers to trade over 100 countries became members of GAT. Uh, you remember I told you they started with 23 members. Uh, then after 20, after Second World War, they became over 100 in the world and worked together for further liberalized the trade. Um, they they also came the Uruguay. Lound and the World Trade Organization. The conference is the conference that took took about because they came in Lound in the Uruguay. They wrote rules governing the protection of intellectual properties, the reduction of agricultural subsidies, the the strengthening of GATT, monitoring and enforcement mechanisms. Uh, the WTO experience to date um <coughs> the wto brought many lightning rounds of discussions or a lot of diverse organizations from uh, environmentalists human rights groups to labor unions that oppose the free trade but falda as it grew all these organizations argued that uh, the WA2 is an, an a democratic institution that was uh, unsub serving the national sovereignty of member states and making decisions of great importance behind closed doors. They took advantage of CETO meetings to voice their opposition. Um, this Later on, was uh, translated into or uh, further discussions brought it into the change to ITO or the International Trade Organization, 
because they had uh, the unresolved issues or the unresolved uh, disagreements that they have to discuss on uh, they brought the rounds in cattle Doha and they have got together some initiatives it is starting from 2000 2000 no before that in 1995 but the discussion rounds did not get uh, to its end uh, but in 2000 uh, in 2000 they agreed on cutting tariffs on industrial goods and the services for example the average tariff rates on an agriculture products were 4.4 percent for canada 4.5 for the european union 4.0 for japan and 4.7 percent for the united states on agricultural products however it was not it was not common to all countries you can see that the countries were uh, specific it was not common to all countries because some african member countries were were not called within that meeting you can even analyze up to today, to today there are some easy agreement there are some agreements between the the countries like within the european union if you remember the the recent rounds of discussions about the brexit when the british were exiting from um from the the, the european union that was because of uh, these tariffs of goods and services within the european union for the england people or the english people were seeing that they are losing within this facilitation of some uh, uh, countries so for it it has to get out of those agreements they had signed before so that it may be, it, 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 the government was thinking it would benefit more and uh, it did, did not work on their sides it didn't work as they thought it would be because if you can hear if you watch you do watch the news and you can hear what is going on you know what is happening and um british uh, the economy is moving is is moving uh, down size if i can say so um on agricultural projects um, uh, at this time in 2000 uh, in 2000 some countries the tariffs were lowered but within the other countries or part of the world it was not like this um and depending on the way they exchanged the goods they exchanged the goods so phasing out of subsidies this way this we is still discussing on a uh, uh, WTO development and the GAT subsidies introduce significant dissolutions into the production of agricultural uh, products the net effect was to raise prices to consumers reduce the volume um of agricultural trade and encourage the overproduction of products that are heavily subsidized with the government typically buying up the surplus and uh, this did not work to all of the countries uh all of the countries did not phase out the subsidies only few of them of those who attended the discussions of Doha in 2000 are uh, reducing the anti-dumping laws because the anti-dumping laws they have also some negative effects so in that discussion of 2000 in uh, Doha they, they also discussed on this 
The WHO rules allow countries to impose anti-dumping duties. There are rules on foreign goods that are being sold cheaper than at home. Yeah. Uh, this is self-explanatory. Uh, if I can give like an example, uh, before the this discussion took these discussions of Doha took place. It was like if you see that uh, a country is bringing a cheaper good and selling them in your country, you had to put their rules immediately that are prohibiting them to bring those goods within your country. Those are the anti dumping laws. All below their cost of production. Where domestic producers can show that they are being harmed. So they discussed on how we they can reduce this. I had to go with this because I was not remembering where we stopped the last time. My today's uh, intent was to discuss on FDI or foreign direct investment. But because nobody was able to remind me where we stopped the last time, we had to go through this so that we, as we resume our, our course, we go in the same mood, uh, so that m at least few people can get lost. Because I know we cannot move forward without losing some people. That's how the law of the nature says. When in a class over 30 people, some people will get lost unless we are having below 30. Uh, you can even see some people are lost in attendance. They have not attended. WTO on intellectual property. They have also to discuss the intellectual property in uh, 2000. Um, they, they discussed whether it sh the WHO should allow for healthy production in poor nations, rich countries how to comply with the rules within a year, poor countries in which such protection generally was much weaker than uh, how five years of grace and the very poorest have ten years of grace when they are going to produce from uh, to another rich country mm. I don't know whether we are still together so those rounds of discussions they were at that that is the development up to the date there are so many developments that are being made. Maybe we'll add them further. Um, we'll have to add maybe another slide dis talking about the uh, uh, further discussions. On a and improvements on international trade. Uh, you know some. Some of them are locally. Others are within the, the continents. Uh, because you know the ones in Europe, the other ones in Africa, uh, the other one is in, um, in the Middle East. Each part of the world wants to uh, have some specific agreements. Within the East Africa, you remember the free move of people and goods. Within the Africa, it is the aim, but which is hardly achieved. You can see even the transport in Africa moving from. Um, you will see if you are coming from Kigali maybe to to Zambia, 
it will take you much money than going to Dubai because of the agreements the air the air movement of people agreements that is not functioning um you will see even to move from uh, maybe in uganda to zimbabwe it will take you much money as if you are going to america um so this is because there is no much agreements that are being enforced the agreements are there but they are not enforced so the lafalda discussion is that we have to talk about as time allows i will have to compile some and put them here if time allows because uh, time is also not on our side uh, but i will have to remember and put there some then uh, let's talk about the implication of these uh, discussions this law these improvements on uh, for managers how are the managers uh, implicated for the managers if you are managing the industry or if you are working on in a business you should consider all these development and you should consider all those influences from abroad and from international uh, perspective um whatever you develop within your country you should ensure that it's not affected by the international agreements and policies or the barriers that have been set within your country um even the policies that are put there by your your country or the country that you are investing in trade barriers are constraints upon a farm's ability to disperse its productive activities um international farms have an incentive to lobby for free trade to robi you understand one of you that one who told me is uh, he works within that one who works within uh, the national electoral commission the counter is those ones who are counting the votes they should be knowing the, this verb the robi those one is who are robbing i think it is the trick of finding the vote for your candidate the trick used by the those people yes you should lobby for free trade if you are managing a company in, in international trade and you should do keep pushing the pressure um so that you can maybe cause the change to the process there is a big company a company here that is robbing uh, and it has changed it has affected the much of you see it's an international company that is uh, working in the banking which one you know which one do you know in Rwanda that is very influential and it's from abroad in the banking Equity. Yes. equity bank yes equity bank it's now influencing some systems and it's from uh, uh, it's from abroad so this means that you know it is uh, it has good people in the lobbying So uh before we discuss or maybe I can give a round of floor to ask questions and uh because some people were not present last time when we talked about this
we can first receive some few questions for further understanding so the more we discuss about it the more you understand it well well I can only receive some few questions like uh, three or two and then we move to FDI I explain a little bit then we discuss about it because I want you to tell me more about this I will only explain what is this what is it then you tell me more uh, about its practices so I have a question yes uh, my question is about the FDI. Why the FDI is established, for example, in Rwanda? Why? <laughs> it's like uh, within the other countries, FDI may it may have different reasons to be uh, established. For example, it wants you to to boost our economies depending on what we produce or what we don't produce the recent FDI that happened in Rwanda but that uh, didn't remain very well in the years of the some practitioners here of businesses in Rwanda was uh, the bringing in of positive do you remember that yes uh, and maybe it extinguished but did the positive work bring a positive impact on our economy or not some uh, there are some positive impact that are positive is coming within yeah. in the economy but there is another negative impact we we are not maybe comparing or maybe we'll have a a tissue a, a tea table to compare and contrast the but what i say, what i can tell you is that we all accept or we establish the fdi for impacting our economies mostly we are envisaging the positive impact That is the short and the answer I can give it to you. Okay. Yeah. We are expecting the positive impact, but most of the time you will see that uh, sometimes you will meet with uh, negative impacts. Like a positive way, if we compare, you will see that there are some more negative impacts that are even still happening we brought it so that we can buy computers from our home but now we went back to buy them from abroad again but the problem was not with the positive the problem was with how we agreed to let it come instead of letting hp come or the other computer manufacturing industries that were more competitive than uh, positive or that was from uh, even the unknown country, Argentina. Any other question? If there is no question to me, it's either you have understood or you have not understood. What is the so real I answer? have another question. Yes. Uh, my, my question was about, uh, you see, for example, sometimes in our day, the FDI is starting to, uh, to visit some industries here in Rwanda. Oh, you are not, mean, and, uh, you are not meaning... Uh, uh, hey, continue, continue. Then I will ask you before, after finishing. Okay. 
sometimes there is a bridge different policies that uh, can measure the positive impact of the economy of Rwanda like uh, but I would like to know why sometimes they agree to import the, 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 the commodities which have some harmful things or like envelope like uh, the other ones mm. and to be imported here in Rwanda but unfortunately the nations and the, the citizens when you produce for example something in the envelope which is like a plastic you are abused hmm? so the Why? the inputs the inputs are allowed to the inputs are allowed to bring the maybe the harm for products right that's i'm not yes. getting i'm trying to get your question yeah, 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 yeah. Then, but the within the production within the country, yeah, in in the country, you are not mm -hmm. allowed to package. Yeah. Within plastic bags. Yes. Why is it that? Yeah, yeah. Why? Maybe we'll have to invite the minister of commerce to give us more explanation because me, I am also wondering why. Because this might uh, cause damages to cities and the local producers, Disadv it disadvantages the local producers, but uh, it advantages the foreign or the foreign direct investors. No, I cannot call it di direct investors. Those, uh, those are the international business people. So this may be what I think is caused by the um, it, it's caused by the the economic power within the country. It means we can control what is produced here, but we cannot control what is produced in China. So and you remember we need those products. If we need those products it means that we will have to accept them as they are. But for us, for our local people that we can control, we'll tell them that plastic bags are not allowed within the country. Unless it's, you will see when you go to Kanombe International Airport, when you have a plastic bag, like when you are coming from these East African countries, uh, like from Tanzania, they are having so many bags, plastic ones. Those ones were being used we, that we were using here in Rwanda. The black, the black one, they are there. You can buy a bread from maybe a good bakery in uh, Tanzania, but when you reach in Kanombe, they will tell you you have to remove this bag. But for the goods that are coming from abroad, very far, well packaged they will not tell you that because they know you there is no any other way of keeping them what they will tell you is to do not sell them within those bags but it's very challenging and for them i'm not so sure they will be able to control this so let's go to fdi uh, because i can see that the time is elapsing let's go to fdi i explain a little bit then you tell me uh, uh you we discuss more about it um the foreign direct investment in general it occurs when a farm invests directly in new facilities to produce and all in a foreign countries um for example, if we have a farm here that is manufacturing milk, like Inyange, and decide to go to South Sudan to produce, to, Im to, to, uh, to construct another building of producing milk, correction up to the last customer, then sell it to South Sudanese, and it can even export it from there to the northern Sudan or to Djibouti, to Ethiopia, and the other ne neighboring countries of, of South Sudan. 
that country will be that company now will be called a multinational enterprise because it has opened another branch within another country and in, in economic terms it is called a foreign direct investor so the discussion comes here i want to ask you this uh, why do you think people decide to invest directly? Or why do you think the companies decide to undertake FDI instead of exporting? You see, I am in Rwanda here. I am maybe the manager of Inyange industry. I'm deciding not to continue exporting, but I'm uh, applying for a license for direct investment, investment of obtaining a license for production and constructing the other facilities. Why do you think that the round, the flow is used? I will go one by one. Let's start with uh, to see whether you have followed all of you. Let's go to start with uh, Alphonse Quizel. We are going alphabetically now. Alphonse, are you here? Alf yes, yes, yes. I hear you. Yeah, and then answer yeah. to the question I asked. May you repeat once again? Mm -hmm. That's what I say. Yes. You were here, but you have sent my hand. Why a company choose to use the FDI instead of importing the other things? Why do you think a company decided to invest directly instead of exporting the production, its production? Because of that thing, mm -hmm. FDI, as we said, FDI, there is a, uh, there is a, some challenges that can, that can challenge them, such as uh, for transforming for transferring goods from from that part. Mm, mm, mm. Are you sure? Are you? Yeah. How sure are you? Uh -huh. Let's go with another one. I don't want to waste time. Maybe you will get corrections from my colleague. Amina Jacqueline. Are you Amina Jacqueline or you are Amina? Because I have so many Amina in the, on the wrist. I mean, I am not hearing you. Can you put on your microphone, then you talk louder. Yes, I am ready. Then tell me, why do you think a company may decide to invest directly to another country? instead of exporting its production. Can you repeat it, please? <laughs> I have repeated it several <laughs> times. <laughs> Why do you think a company decided to export, no, to invest directly in another country instead of uh, exporting its production? You are not here too. You are absent minded. And, and I and I have even put the answers on the screen. <laughs> I 
I can say that there's something which is, I know, according to the Forogina direct investment, mm -hmm. I know that it is multinational and enterprise. <laughs> What is your second name? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, very good. You have tried. Let's go to Angelique. <laughs> Let's go to Angelique Masenye show. Angelique, why do you think that a company can choose to to, to invest directly in another country instead of uh, exporting its production. Imagine if I ask you such a, a question in your examination. Angelique is not there. <laughs> the problem is the language. <laughs> Transport. This one we've better to better. It's uh, better twenty one twenty twenty one seventy six forty six three. You are the next to my issue. Greeting you, Francois. Francois is not there too. Yes, can you tell um, me why you think that the company choose to invest directly to another country instead of uh, importing goods? I think that that way of importing mm -hmm. can make uh, more benefit to mm -hmm. that ca company. You think? It provides mm -hmm. the <coughs> benefit. Mm -hmm. A company can gain more mm -hmm. than Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for you. I want to hear from you. Okay, we, I will I will close. No, 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 I suppose that's fun. I have a key. So I can see that you, all of you, look like you were failing to the question. If I go alphabetically, we will not be able to get the answer to the question. Uh, who is there who can give us some uh, ideas, but not from the notes? You can raise your hand, I can see you, then uh, I also give you the answer, then we go. If you are failing to to bring in the real answer. You are now 28 in the class.
28 people have missed the idea. Somebody said it will give the benefits. Nobody is lazing the hand. I can see area. Yes. Yes, actually. Mm. Uh, the, the purpose of choosing the to invest the to 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 invest the investment in the, in the other countries. Yes. Is it that creating a, to help to create mutual that lead to an increase of uh, income and more purchasing power to locals? Mm -hmm. Which leads to uh, an uh, overall boost in, in the economy. Mm. And those country which has those uh, company which invest in the their country those uh, country experience high economic growth mm -hmm. by those investors so for you the reason is to create the jobs in to the in the other countries mm -hmm. and increasing the income the income of who? Also to income to the investors and the country within the they create the the, the investment mm. uh, any other one gasan has also raised the hand yes yes lecturer yes i'm alphonse once again yes how i hear this mm. uh the first of all uh it increases the revenue of mm -hmm. that company mm -hmm. the second the foreigner, uh, it the foreigner, I will be correcting your English because you are make, bringing miracles. The foreigners, okay, thank you. <clears throat> the second is they want to to encourage, encourage. The, to encourage the experience to other markets of out of the upload to other uh, markets. Mm, that's what mm, you that's, think. Yeah. The Fed is easy. Mm -hmm. I wanted to to be uh, to create the brand, the brand of a country to another country. Mm -hmm. With the power mm -hmm. of that company to the outside of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Another one is is it to imitate what others they are they are produce. What others are producing. Oh. That is what you think. It's not a reality, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not a reality because you cannot intend to, to copy from others. So uh, generally I wanted you to bring the the answers because what i'm teaching is all it also appears within your notes if you have read the notes and even the, and even the the the, the, the recent is not easy hmm? the sensing of the product in the different the country the sensing licensing licensing the the product mm -hmm. yeah yeah it is not easy is that why some companies are decided to use fbi instead of exporting the, the goods and services there in other countries. Because as you know, to, for example, there are, some, there are some countries that are establishing different policies that uh, makes, the, like for example, how we, we take the Chagua in Rwanda. Yes. We take a Chagua, there are any policies that we make in order to, uh, to reduce the, 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 the quantity that in, importing here in uh, importing here in Rwanda so there's the ones who are selling the 
de, 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 de Changua, here in Rwanda, yes. instead of importing them, they can come and try to, to no, they, they can try to make the investment, the, 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 the investment here. And then, because what? There are some policies that ignore or that reducing, that minimize the Chagua here in Rwanda. That means the sensing of Chagua to them, it is not easy in here in Rwanda. So that means they have to, to use FDI in order to be like, uh, continue to grow their economy instead of searching the sensing. Yeah, there are so many reasons that, uh, thank you all, there are so many reasons that uh, you have violated one of the most influencing. Licensing is a, a step that is not easier in any country, whether it's in, whether it's in Africa or it's uh, in Europe. When you want maybe to sell pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, pharmaceutical goods uh, or drugs, it won't be easier for you to get a license to be selling from abroad. But if you apply for an investment opportunity, you will see they will take you as a big man who is bringing much money on the, on the table. Try it and go somewhere with your money and tell them that you want to bring to build an industry of something they will receive you with both hands because they know the country will have some benefits you will employ more people within the country you will uh, uh, pay taxes you will do what and that uh, will help you to to sell confidently even the exports will be easier for you. Another reason is that uh, the, uh, the, um, the exports, some people want to be privileged. The company owners want to earn the privilege uh, from being the owners of the multinational companies. If they know that my company is multinational, I will go to a next country. I will be invited as a, a guest of honor near the president, near the minister, near the what. Um, but if I take it, if I come there as a seller, a wholesaler who is selling the products from abroad, they don't even know me. They, they will take me as a, a, another business person. Uh, so the major reason is that um, the major reason is why uh, the company choose to do the FDI instead of um, instead of uh, licensing or uh, export. It's because the li the, li the licensing process itself is difficult than introducing another, another company. It has the major three throwbacks that are below. They are even within your, own, your notes. Licensing may result in a firm's giving away valuable, as a valuable technology or know-how to a potential foreigner competitor. You may get licensed within the country, but you, they will be able to copy your technology, how you do your things. But if you go there in the country, then you start as an industry. You will not give them the, the ability to copy from you because you will be licensed within your country immediately as an innovator and the owner of that product. Licensing does not also give a firm the tight control over manufacturing, marketing, and the strategy in a foreign country that may be required to maximize the profitability. You know this, you know when like uh, uh, Mukwano, do you remember the Mukwano Jerry? Uh, or the, and, the yeah, Mukwa, yeah. and the Mukwano oil, do you remember that? Yes, in it. Is it being used now in the country? You can't. 
can you cannot see it everywhere it was it was advised yeah i advertised yeah but it it it, 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 it uh, applied for a license to advertise and sell but as time goes and the cooperation between the two countries is slowed it went it was uh, extinguishing but if it was it had applied to take an example of uh, azam industry do you know azam azam is an fdi is a foreign direct investment that have been done by tanzanians but whatever cooperation is that have been lowered within rwanda and tanzania azam has continued to work within rwanda and has got its competitive income isn't it so that is why many of yes. the people compare yes, the direct investment better than the licensing or exporting yes. because the exporting is easily broken by the relationship between the two countries and the diplomacies that are taking place but the diplomacy is rarely it, 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 the diplomacy layer breaks the production or the existence of a foreign a, a foreign company um another thing is what alphonse if not area has mentioned some people they go there they go within the other countries because the readers of those countries are calling them so that they may give much uh, employment they can uh, contribute to the employment in the country of the citizens um you can also see the same uh, industries within the same uh, area of manufacturing use fdi or consider fdi to be important uh, that is because they want to maximize the the profitability they they think that is someone in the country in the same field will not affect our uh, our performance so for today i think some of you guys have been working the entire day as i am i'm feeling tired i don't like to be teaching much of the things in a, in a day and you are few but unfortunately i will post this uh, over my youtube because the videos sharing was are not working properly so for this of today so i'm using the post of youtube so that you get the link by tomorrow i will share the link with you uh i'm going to share to upload this on youtube so that you those who are absent those can get the chance to go through what you have taught today and uh, tell them that it's their duty to attend because if they don't not attend they will not ex be excused from mount kenya some people are telling me you have chosen the whole day program and you are teaching us in the day in the, on a daily basis you chose you have chosen the day, the, the, the whole day program but you know that there is a part a face to face part and an online part so and remember it's for your sake for the knowledge if you don't get it you will not be able to teach properly and if you are not able to teach properly you know the district where you will be employed or the lab they will not give you some that man of uh, of use they have added on how much are you receiving now teachers they are not answering it, it depends it depends on what on your cert certificate on your certificate yes. i mean those who are teaching on a2 the advanced level secondary the beginner hundred eight thousand. Hey, it's much now. Comparing to to what they were receiving last year. 
Yes. So uh, the problem of bankruptcy yeah. can influence the company to to go to the other country to invest their money. How can the, the finance? No, it cannot influence. So if you are bankrupt, how can you invest in okay. another country? Uh, Do you know what the bankruptcy yeah. means? Yeah, yeah. It's like a financial crisis. Bankruptcy means you are remaining with nothing in the pocket. Uh. So if uh, if you are bankrupt, no country will receive okay. you. <laughs> 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 so, uh, unless maybe the policies uh, the policies uh, within the country where you are going can facilitate you to go there, there is the, some guys uh -huh. there is some guys came came from in Uganda they are do, they are, they have gone in Zimbabwe uh -huh. to find their money is not having their pocket they went to invest in Zimbabwe. Yeah, they want to, to find the life, to find the money. They go to work there. They find went the job. to to find the jobs. To find the job yeah. there. If you don't have money, you cannot go abroad to to invest without background. But you guys, you let me money. tell you. I want. I I thought I will have a session to tell to students to some people who want to go abroad. If you are maybe umuyede here, eh? you are umuyede on a, a, a specific part of the country, do you think you will go there and become an executive secretary? <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> so how much, how, how do you think you will get money from there? So if we, the life is not easier in your country, how do you think we, it will be able in a, it will be easy in another country because it is what we call international international rules. You know the tariffs, the dumping, and what the protectionism. They will protect their yeah. citizens to earn more than you earn. <laughs> so <laughs> look at these guys who are going to America. What what jobs they are doing? It's a fucking job. Yes, you are not. You are not going well, there to do a white color job. Yeah, yeah. So for one. what I can tell you, you well, have to strive for your life to be better within your country. Yeah. Because I have never seen somebody who has uh, look. If you go to America, if you sleep here in a five-star hotel in Rwanda. If you go to America, you will be able to sleep in a hotel of five star. But if you go there to USA, here in Rwanda, what you can do is only to sleep in a road within that Nyamirambo, Imijina Press. You know the press. In, 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 in abroad, you will sleep in the same press, or lower than that praise so strive for your betterment within your country not think think of going abroad as an option because you will be there as somebody who is from abroad and you will stay there they will tell you go and uh, wash the dishes in the restaurant go and serve the coffee go and serve the within the go kitchen on. those things those are the ones the you will be is. doing but thinking that you will get a you better life it will not work you will get at least the money if the currency their currency is higher than ours it will yeah. work imagine coming work. from rwanda and going to zimbabwe and you know the problem of inflation yeah. that is there even though you can get millions of money from zimbabwe that money cannot work that here money. except if you go to struggle except in uh, like in kenya in kenya their in currency kenya, is higher than ours current. if you have like one million kenyan yeah, shillings, when you come here you will be considered among the rich people 
but what will you do there to get that but money? What? If you are a teacher here, it will be difficult for you to get a certificate of teaching in Kenya. Kenya. If you are going to do a business, you will be required the, the billions of investment. Because even in the these street sellers, the Agataro people, we call them here. None of them have developed themselves from their streets. How do you think you are a foreigner? You don't know even their language. You are going to develop yourself from there. It's difficult, my friend. So it's, it was just um, a piece of advice. We are ending today from here. And I think we will have to resume our class on uh, Thursday, right? Because I have to teach you twice within a week. Um, did I record this? I don't know. But I, what I know, I have recorded within my computer. The video will stay within my computer. I'm going to upload it immediately on here. Uh, YouTube. Uh, then, uh, then you will be able you to will. access it. Those who yes. have not been able to join today will be able to be able. access it. Yes. But tell them it's for their sake. If they don't go within no. these discussions you have had, they will get lost. Will get. So I wish you a good so night we. and uh, a nice week. We are still at the starting. May God protect you within the night and the rest of uh, your days. Thank you very much. For us, but for us, we study economics. But, uh, but for us, we study. We would like to. You would like to. I would like to, would like to ask if it's possible. There are some requests from my fellows. Mm -hmm. To extend the date of submission, if it's possible. What I can do, I can I only can. add uh, up to. You were supposed to submit up to Thursday, right? Yes. I can Sorry. only Sorry. add Sorry. three days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. anyone failing okay. to do that, to respect that, to I respect. will not ex extend it more. Because the university because, is prohibiting yeah. this, it is producing crazy students. Someone was saying that you you are having economics of what? On the we start economics when we ship. You said on if on Saturday you will start again. So tell the, you will, so what you do though, tell those people to attend. So let's put it on Wednesday. So there is no problem. On the 16th, on the 16th. And, we will, and we will we will maintain these will two win. days until we finish. You tell them every tell Monday them. at this time and every Wednesday we'll be having a class. Yeah. I, we don't, you don't yeah. need more communications. You tell them that every week you have the class of have international business international. management. Uh, every Monday and every Wednesday. Yeah. At but 6 p.m. This, this upcoming Wednesday, we will have uh, the other class eh, of uh, economic, economic development in two. But you can discuss this with week, him. This you, do you Wednesday. think I will remain the only flexible person? You tell him also to be flexible. To shift it to another day because today because today today have uh, he have promised to come today but i talked to him better because we have another class here he, already we have we always started and uh okay let's he, decide on that he, on wednesday maybe we can put it on uh, but friday i'm i don't become available we shall friday. look at another day friday and weekends they are challenging to me because mm -hmm. in weekends I'm at home and you know at home the children are bringing issues, the what, the wife, the, so it's not easy to teach from home. But at oh. least when I'm in office... We can, we can make on Thursday. 
next week thursday okay. maybe but for this week we will take wednesday isn't it hello yes for this week we will maintain wednesday I'm not hearing you well. I'm but, saying uh, that uh, I'm saying that for this week we will maintain Wednesday and another week we will let that Wednesday be used for with that by that lecture of uh, economics. Uh, Isn't it? Oh yeah. No, no, no. He, he has already said that it is our last chance to get him. To get him for this week? Yeah, yeah. Which Wednesday and does he want? Weeks. He will not he will not be allowed he will not be allowed this one is the is he that he wants if so let's do this tell your colleagues to come tomorrow now tomorrow ne, the well, same yeah. time okay because me i Let we communicate with them. I, I don't want this week to get spent without teaching again because we are still behind yeah. and we want to cover more yeah okay. oh, yeah. we can we can use the first day thursday they said they have yeah. another class you have another class yes some of you yes. guys on the first day who have the, the other class on alphonse the, said that alphonse <laughs> For the economy, economy. I think the the, the, the Alphonse is like me. We will have a class uh, on Wednesday. So let so Thursday. let's use it Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Keep this in mind. Later we can use it Thursday. Keep this in Maybe mind and inform Maybe. them to come uh, on time. Yeah, let me try to. And we will use the same link as like this. Yes, you can use this. Uh, the only thing I will do is to edit that. S and I send okay. you updates. Then you write there is, there is a way I only change the date. Then I send it to you. Then I... Okay, thank you. Let's communicate to other colleagues. Okay, welcome. Okay. I'll see you on Thursday I'll then. Thank you. 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 Thank you.